Light chop on English Bay, a great day for sailing as we return to Vancouver and the Sagitt World Cup of Gymnastics before we get back to the PNE Coliseum. We're set for another installment of Chuck Talk with Carol Orchard. Today's topic, judging, separating art from technique. And here's Carol now outside the Vancouver Art Gallery. Mark, within this magnificent building, a feast for the eyes awaits you. Most of the artwork will really appeal to you, but there may be a piece or two you'll have no feelings for whatsoever. But then, there'll be the select few that actually move you. Now that's art. The same is true in gymnastics, is where sport meets art. And although gymnasts will spend years of intensive training dedicated to the pursuit of technical perfection, it will be the artistic performances that will actually touch you. But how do you evaluate a feeling? How do you judge art? In gymnastics, it's quite simple. You don't. The score is predominantly based on the technical merit. Pure technical perfection will always be Gina Gojan's legacy. But in figure skating, the opposite seems to be true. Artistic impression is evaluated, and it has a major impact on the final results. Perhaps allowing personal preference or bias to come into play. It can be very subjective. In gymnastics, nothing is left to chance. There's a deduction for virtually every scenario. No one knows this better than Kui Yan Yan, when at the 1997 World Championships in Luzon, we watched her golden artistic performance quickly turn to bronze with a single step. Then why do these world-class athletes continue to push themselves toward ever-increasing artistic innovation when it definitely adds to the risk? This is their form for personal expression, and the stars don't disguise their passion. They pride themselves on being the best they can be on every level in their pursuit of excellence with heart and soul. And Carol, speaking of heart and soul, how about this man, Zhang Jingjing of China. His left arm is all bruised, you can see it there. His leg is hurting. We saw him limping terribly before this event on the Palma Horse. And this will be the only event he's going to compete in because of that severe leg injury. But this is a work of art. Single Palma work is the most demanding element on Palma Horse. And it's because the base of support is so small. He has to keep the center of gravity right over top of his arms. Very smooth, very graceful. Jing Jing of China. This is exactly what the judges want to see. It's like the rodeo bucking bronco. The longer the ride, the better. And I think he's been up there for about an hour and a half. That's an incredible performance. Zhang Jing Jing, 22-year-old from Beijing, hurting, but putting that aside for this event. And success on this event comes right down to the handwork. And the score for Jing Jing, 9.60. Next on the Palma Horse, representing Canada from Abbotsford, here in British Columbia, Richard Aikida. Bronze medalist on the Palma Horse of the 94 Commonwealth Games. The bronze medalist in 95 at the Pan Am Games and now with heady competition here at the World Cup. And this is his best event. Oh, he's struggling. Had to let it go. Keita falling off the end of the Palma Horse in the first 10 seconds of this routine. Now he'll have 30 seconds to chalk up, get his thoughts together, and decide at what point he's going to continue. He wants to show the judges as many skills as he can to get that all-important 10-point start value. Already he has lost 0.5 for the fall. Exactly right. Nice high scissors well above his shoulders. He swings beautifully. Great extension. And there's that single pommel work. That's more like it. This is a strong event for Richard. If we could get every Canadian member of our team doing this, they will qualify for a team in Sydney 2000. Nice finish for Richard Aikida of Abbotsford. It's often said it's not the mistake, but how you recover. 8.90, a 
A decent mark when you consider the .5 deduction for the fall. And now Eric Goujard of France. Silver medalist in the pommel horse last year in Lausanne, the world championships, and the current leader on the World Cup Tour. And a lot of people are quite surprised he is completely dominating the World Cup circuit on this event. Beautiful work. Watch his hands, tight grip, good support. And the speed of the swing is also very important. The judges are looking for absolute perfect execution. The hips are very straight. As they break into those scissors, that's a special requirement. They must show them. Beautiful routine. He told me he's not at all intimidated on this event. It's his specialty. Eric Pujat of France setting the standard here today in the Pommel Horse and his score, 9.60. Accepting congratulations on the sidelines. That's enough to put the Frenchman in first place. Jing Jing of China is second. Richard Aikida settling for sixth place. When we come back, Bi Wenjing of China and the women's uneven bars at the PNE Coliseum in Vancouver. Beautiful day in Vancouver as we welcome you back to the Sajid World Cup of Gymnastics at the PNE Coliseum here on the West Coast. And it's time for the women's uneven bars. And Yvonne Tusik, representing Canada, she was involved in the Olympics in Atlanta in 96, leading off on the uneven bars. And this is her best event. Yvonne has wonderful, intricate combination work. Just like that, Canadian coach Michelle Charon stands in, but she is just fine. Every element that she adds a pirouette to, like that, heading into release move, like the packed salto, big bonus points. And the judges will be impressed. Yvonne is working with a 10-point start value. A very strong routine, winding up for the dismount. It's a double layout. Canada, Excellent performance for Yvonne and for Canada. Wow, Yvonne Tusik stepping up in tough competition at the World Cup. Yvonne is swinging with great form, heading oh. right into her pack salto. Here's the score for Yvonne Tusik, 9.425. That's a great score. That's going to put her in the upper echelon of the final eight in the women's uneven the bars. Her coach, Elvira Sadi, will be very pleased with that. Now to the men's vault. This is Yeo Hong Chul of Korea. He was third coming into this event after three competitions in the World Cup. And he is a vaulting machine. His left ankle has been taped. That's been bothering him. He can't hold back here. This is huge. That is a double back. There are only two or three men in the entire world that can do souk double back. And oh, and he's he limping. feels that on his ankle. You can see in slow motion, he doesn't quite get enough air time, although it's incredible. Lands a little short, and that left ankle is going to be in pain. And the first score on the first vault for Hong Cho, 9.60. Good start for the Korean. Now his second vault. And they will average the two scores for his final mark. And he has so many vaults to choose from. This is a front front laid out with a one and a half twist. And so a limping Yo Hong Cho bravely putting together two great vaults. And there's the average score, 9.55. So that's the score to beat.